Hey everybody, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. In this video, we are going to be going over the Jet Blaster's Sita that I've recently gotten. And uh, yeah, this is a specialty Sita from what I saw. I didn't order it through Jet. I actually ordered this one through evike.com. And yeah, there's a couple pros for that. For one, you're ordering it through not Jet. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for Jet's shipping and handling and customer service and whatnot. And you can just order through a trusted website such as evike, which is a big airsoft. Uh, thing and there are some other cool things about it additionally that I have not really seen before but as you can see you get a nice big old instructions manual oh my gosh yeah we don't need that but as you guys can see this is also the black and red CETA version it's not the CETA S that comes with the alpha kit pre-installed it's still running the still running the Omni kit as it says on the side but it is the red and black version, which is what I really wanted, and uh, I never really got... I always thought the Cedar was a cool thing, but I never really was interested in the normal one, and then I saw this one on Evike for $60 with the red and black color combination that I really wanted, and so that's what I got. Uh, additionally, instead of coming with their full-length uh, reversal mag and their full-length darts, it comes with 15 uh, red jet half-length darts. These are basically... ACC soft nipple darts, which is cool and whatnot, but then it also comes with a black transparent katana mag and the adapter inside of it, so it comes ready to go, ready to shoot half length instead of having to try and use full length, and so that's what that one is for. Uh, the packaging still looks to be the same because it says right here that it comes with a jet darts clip and a 12 foam darts, whereas this actually comes with 15 since it's coming with the half length mag instead of the 12 length full length mag. Uh, on the box, it says that it will take the Omni kit, which is both short and full length, has a 13 millimeter barrel, spring pump action, ages 14 plus, and a velocity of 80 to 100 FPS. From me fiddling with it the other day, I would definitely say that's probably around 80. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's near 100. Firing this next to stock rival blasters, you're not going to be getting similar performance. Uh, I was firing both full length and half length, and half lengths were definitely doing better because of the barrel setup that it has. But full lengths were definitely closer to around 80 FPS, which is fine if you want to get this for stock play. I definitely recommend it. It's still more than adequate. I only had a few issues where the Omni Kit's barrel is not threaded, it's only held in by friction. So there was one time when I was playing around with it that the barrel actually slipped forward out of its holder and I had to push that back manually and then I also had a couple times where a really fresh dart would get stuck in the barrel but that's all right we plan on modifying this thing anyways but first I'm just gonna let you guys look at it it looks absolutely beautiful I love the color combination the black and red just looks so nice I love it yeah it's got a clear bolt set I'll take that off for you guys but yeah, there are a lot of things from me looking around at the Cedar that I really enjoy. For one, this double O-ring setup on the breech, I really like that. I like this bolt sled. This bolt sled seems relatively strong. I'm going to see how much stress the stock bolt sled can take by modifying this blaster and then seeing how far I can push it before I break it. And here we have the base Cedar. Uh I honestly wish it had a little bit more red, but... When we put the two halves together, it looks very cool. Yeah, it takes some practice getting the shells lined up, but once you do, it's very nice. And once you get the stock on as well, it looks very cool, very, very nice. The magazine release is just like the Retaliators, but it's much bigger release to grab onto, so I really like that. The handle is <laughs> enormous. I, yeah, well, like, like, I have decently big hands, but I can fit two... <laughs> extra fingers on the bottom comfortably without them coming off so it's an incredibly comfy handle I'll let you take a look at that Tucker uh, then additionally in the box it comes with the two pins that keep the upper and lower receiver together and that's about it I was a little surprised because on the original CETA I know that you got extra o-rings for the uh, for the breach here and the plunder tube and you also I believe got another bolt sled which is interesting because maybe that was more in them in their prototyping phase where they didn't really think that people would need those anymore and so this is them selling through evike you don't get as much and it's clearly made for half length play uh, the safety 
comes pre-installed right there behind the trigger. I kind of like it, but it's incredibly stiff to index and push in around. So if you're in around and your safety is actually on, you're gonna have to take a little bit of force to push that. And also, when I was playing the other day, I would have the safety all the time just off because I was just messing around with it in the house. And there were a couple times where uh, there was the trigger. If I keep if I keep working the trigger, occasionally it catches on the safety and it sticks a little bit and makes the trigger pull much harder. Whereas in the stock form, the trigger pull is actually incredibly nice. Uh, if I take out the plunger tube here, plunger tube clicks into place. Uh, it's not ambidextrous as I thought. I was assuming based on looking at it that I was able to put it in either way with no issues, but there's actually an arrow which way they want you to put it. So I didn't experience any issues when I was flipping it around, but just to be safe, I guess put it in how they want it. As you guys can see down there, the catch works. The catch uh, spring is incredibly tough. I opened it up and looked at it and it was already really dope. I don't think I'm ever going to need to replace that or anything. The stock spring feels to be about the same as a 7kg retaliator spring. Uh, I tested it with both an orange round or 7kg spring, a worker 7kg spring, and this, and it all seemed to get very similar numbers and performance, except this one is just like a little bit shorter in overall length. So that's the only thing that I can noticeably say. The plunger rod is cool. I like that it's angled at the back here. That should be good. And the seal is pretty nice. It doesn't come with any upgraded O-rings, so I'm assuming that O-ring better be pretty good. And the last thing I want to talk about is the stock. Uh, from the original CETA, I saw a lot of people complaining about how much wiggle it had inside. And it's definitely one thing that I want to work on because it's very tough to get on. And one thing that's very tough to get off. <laughs> Once it's on there, it takes a little bit of work to squeeze it off. But it looks like it matches pretty well in the fully class position is how short I like it. I feel like it's a decent length to shoulder for me personally. But you can extend it all the way out to there. I'll let you see what you think, Tucker. Fully extend it, and you push it down. Push it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I like that. Hold and extend it. My main issue is there's just a little bit of play and wiggle uh, forward and backwards on it, and there's also just a tiny bit of play to side to side. So it does wiggle around. A little bit. I'll probably be adding some foam onto the buffer tube or in the stock here to solidify in place once I modify this thing. Um, but yeah, I'm fairly proud of this thing. It looks pretty dope. The stock is very comfy. Shouldering this thing when it's all put together is incredibly nice. Uh, and so I'm just gonna put it together right now for you guys just to show you how easy it is. So basically, you drop a spring down in place. I wish, I wish there was more of a spring guide because currently all there is is a spring stop. But as you guys can see, if I move it in frame, actually, the spring is able to move around a lot, which is kind of an annoying. I would like it to have a better spring guide that keep it, keeps it straight, but it's all good. But you slide the plunger tube in place, click it in and down past the detents. I'll actually show you guys that on the side of the plunger tube here, there are these little acrylic pieces that click into the shell once you push them back and then it doesn't come at all forward. Um, I'm trying to decide currently which way I like better taking it apart by leaving the bolt sled in the lower receiver, I guess, or the upper receiver. It's easier to take it apart if I just take out the two pins and then keep the bolt sled attached to here to the pump grip, but it's easier to put back together if I have the bolt sled here. But let's see if I can get this lined up properly. So there's these two tracks here that line up these two little grooves on the shell. So you need to line that up, and then once you get that, it slides together just like so. Short pin up top, long pin down at the bottom. Um, these pins work really well, they slide in and out nicely. I don't really like the key rings, purely for that noise. I'll probably be taking them off, but I don't know how easy it will be to just push and pull the pins out without the key rings, so we'll see about that. And then I usually line it up through the mag well, but you just line up the two side screws to go in through the bolt sled. And it's super easy to do. And it seems to be very strong. But yeah, there it is.
Alright guys, we just had a little bit of a camera issue. Uh, it should be fine. I may have to refilm the first part. But as you guys can see, we got it all fitted together. The barrel says that it is 13 millimeters, the same uh, diameter as the uh, Omega barrel that you guys seen Tucker's blaster. Okay. Uh, it seems like it's a really nice dart fit, but darts will also slide on in. This is a fresh FVJ and it sort of just slides its way down and whatnot. But as you guys can see, it still fires and it's still very powerful. The Omni kit works really nicely. Uh, I haven't had any issues really with the Omni kit when firing full lengths. I have had a few issues with firing half lengths, which is one thing that I really didn't expect from such a blaster that came with a Katana Mag 1 whatnot. But what I have had a few issues is I have had issues where with the Katana Mag, the included half lengths will topple over forward and create some problems. I've had one, uh, first things first, Katana is interesting. I honestly don't know if I like the katana better than a talon. I have a talon right here. It's one of Tucker's that I can compare to. For one, the, well, for starters, I like the adapter that comes with the katana better than the talon. I don't really like the way the talon just clicks in and you pull it out. I like the manual release much better and the mag release on these is so crisp, I wouldn't tap it. And the mag doesn't fall out. Uh, the katana mags are reversible so I can fit them in to the adapter either way. I think that's really cool. That means I don't have to fiddle around when I'm loading up my mag which way is forward. I can just load all the darts the same way and then push them into the blaster. Whereas with the talent, I have to stay consistently true with that, which is fine. But uh, the Talon definitely feels of higher quality, like squeezing on both of these, <laughs> the Katana squishes a fair amount of flex, whereas the Talon is rock solid, like, <laughs> just feel the two of these, Tucker. <laughs> oh, because of the, <laughs> yeah, the, the guide there. Oh, but the, it squishes on the sides, too. Yes, it does, because the, the groove that they cut down the center is cool, I kind of like it. I, don't really get the idea of pulling the follower down because anytime I try and load the master by pulling the follower down, I like the chaos. With ha what happens with the half length is because they're so front heavy, <laughs> they just topple over forward like that, and that's not really what I want. Whereas talons, I feel are much easier to load. Like these things, it just it doesn't feel strange. It feels just like a f loading a full length mag with half length whereas this it feels a little bit different it doesn't feel the same and yeah as i was saying these things just feel so much cheaper like i feel like i could break this with my hand whereas this <laughs> this is i'm torquing on this baby and it it's fine i would definitely trust these talon mags a lot more than katanas and you can get uh replacement adapters for talons that have the mag release and so that's cool uh they are not reversible, as you guys know. Katana won't fit in the Talon adapter, and the Talon, sadly, <laughs> will not fit in the Katana adapter. Different sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, at least half a size. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of the idea that half lengths save space. I could easily fit two 15 mags, where I could fit one, uh, one standard full length mag, so. I'm all for that aspect of half lengths. If you ask me, that's really the only benefit to running half lengths, but I definitely wouldn't be running katanas. <laughs> if you were to ask me, I probably wouldn't run katanas. And so I probably won't ever really use this blaster with the adapter. I may, since I have the adapter and I have the mag, I may make uh, some sort of Mauser fire or spam esque blaster, but I don't really ever see myself. This is. So with the stock spring firing half lengths, it's decently powerful. A little bit of a dent. Yeah, a little bit of a dent. That was with a full length, mm. which is a bigger dent. But uh, another thing I will say that is interesting with Gatan is, is when you have the breech closed, it is very difficult to pull them out. I basically can't. Really? Uh, let's see. 
Because you it's can see that. I like the way that adapter looks better because it doesn't stick down as much. I think it looks cleaner overall, so it's not like wet. Look at that. The, the talon mag I can easily insert and remove when the breech is closed with like a little bit of issue, but it's still fine. Whereas on the katana adapter, it's basically impossible. Um, yeah, I like. I like how low profile the talon adapter is, mm -hmm. and honestly, with something that sticks out this much, it's got a fair amount of play. Like, it wiggles around a ton. And also, it's not even, like, flared, which is something that I would have expected for something that extends out the sides of the blaster. Mm -hmm. I would have expected a flared magwell to make reloads easier. Whereas it's just not. I understand how the talon, the talon, they couldn't really make it flare because it, yeah. it sits it, right in. It sits directly into the blaster. Like there's a little lip to prevent it from going in too far, but there's you can't make that flare. Whereas this totally could have been flared out and made for speedier reloads, but they just didn't. So in my opinion, the only thing that katanas are better than talons are is that this is here. <laughs> And you can get replacement talent adapters that have this, so I don't really like these. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. I wouldn't. I will totally probably make a blaster because I have a sharp fire too, so I will totally probably take the adapter and pop it together and whatnot. But it's just like so gross. See, yeah, that's another thing. I, I could have sworn that they updated the magwells on, this is a caliber magwell, in case anyone's wondering, but it, it's real tight in there, like, <laughs> I like it because of how tight it's held in there, but also, then removing this, <laughs> it's kind of difficult. There's no wiggle in there. There's no wiggle in there, but I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Ooh, the I'm not even going to put the towel in there, that's, it's asking for trouble there. Uh, so this is a 13 millimeter barrel that Tucker has ordered from Monkey Mods. It's metal, as you guys can see. The dart is not falling down. It's a very good dart fit. Like that is probably prime barrel material right there. Whereas with the same dart and this plastic 13 millimeter barrel, if I tilt it and shake it a little bit, it just falls. If I open the breech, I shake it, the dart will come out. And uh, I'm gonna go on a wild hunch and say if I load the dart in through the magwell and whatnot, and then I open it and give it enough shakes, and it'll probably come out. Huh. Interesting, it actually stays in the breach. So maybe this part of the dart gate is actually a tighter fit than the tighter. barrel. That's a, that's a start. Like this has a small chamber to it. Well, it's just like the pressure ring that's put onto the brass. The dart is held in place there to build up pressure, and then once it actually goes in the barrel, there's less resistance. But honestly, this is a much better barrel material, which is sad because I would have expected better from the Omni kit. Uh, it doesn't really fire half lengths all that well, so there's not really a point to run this Omni kit with full lengths. And uh, when firing half lengths, <laughs> it jammed on me so that was interesting because for for a thing that's built to fire both half and full length and to not really do good for either it's kind of disappointing <laughs> let's go omni k very very disappointing to see overall i can't speak for the long shot omni kit but i have not heard good things about it uh, aside from that the exterior is on this blaster is absolutely amazing the pump grip is super comfy and it's rounded on the front so I can put a finger in front of the pump and pump on it like that. I love that part. It's super smooth to prime. Like, there's no flex whatsoever. This blaster shell is nice. I'm just disappointed with the internal that it comes with and the katanas that it comes with. I honestly, <laughs> honestly probably would have been fine if I had gotten the 12 dart full length mag and whatnot. I do like these darts though. They have jet branding on them, which is a little bit disappointing, but the colors on them is very nice as they match the blaster and their soft head nipples, which are good, but they're just like ACC clones. I don't really think, I don't think the stamping of jet does anything. I'll probably just call them ACC darts 
Because they're the same as the <laughs> they're the same as the ACC darts that <laughs> Tucker's gotten. So I don't know. Um, we don't really have a chrono barrel with us right now, but I will load up a couple full lengths just to show you guys that it will in fact fire both. Inserting the magazine on this is great. There's no locks on this blaster whatsoever. Uh, and when feeding full length, it's really nice with that dart finger. And as you can see, it fired off all three. If you heard that, it fired off all three perfectly fine. With no issues feeding whatsoever. Uh, I definitely think firing full length out of the Omni kit is better than firing half length. But I will fire off those half lengths as well for you with their katana mag. We'll see. I have five ACC marks. Let's see if I can get a jam with their katana mag. Well, all right. That was all five. Too buttery. Too buttery smooth would drop. I just dropped the mag while I worked. I accidentally touched that sooner than I thought I would have. But it fired off all of them fine. Uh, so it should be more than fine to use for stock games, but honestly with a blaster that costs $60 or 65 I guess if you buy it from Jet, I feel like it definitely... $69? Oh yeah, it was $69, so that's cool. Oh, additionally after firing it, the barrel came forward so I can actually push it back down into where it needs to be, so that's kind of interesting. And it makes me feel that with enough firing and like playing throughout a day, the barrel is eventually going to fall forward and then you're going to have an issue. Um, going to have a bad time if your barrel comes out, dude. Uh, but as you guys can see, towel mag inserting it with the breech close, just as easy as with full length. And as you can see, the dart finger is barely long enough, barely long enough to keep the mag from jamming. Ooh. Oh, actually. Oh, see. See there, with the talent adapter, since it's slightly farther forward, the dart finger is actually acting more of a pusher instead of keeping the dart down. It's more or less acting as a pusher. And now, by going back and forward one time, I actually have two half lengths loaded into the barrel. It did fire both, which was interesting, but kind of strange how it would do that when I didn't really do anything. I just went backwards and forwards and it still fed both. So definitely sees that their Omni kit was made to work proprietary with their magazines, with their center fed adapters, because as you can see, the Talon adapter is about a centimeter and a half forward of the Katana. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. We're talking about the Cedar that I've gotten. We are gonna be modifying this thing. So stay tuned for another episode where I put uh, brass breech and a big old big old spray into the thing see just how hard I can hit it Just just how hard I can get it to hit <laughs> Just how hard can I hit this thing? Nah, see how hard I can make the C to hit With both I'm gonna try and keep both the full length and half length speeding capabilities on this thing since I do kind of like it being able to fire both but I probably won't be using this <laughs> This will probably either get sold or be put away into a box <laughs> to be forever <laughs> taken away. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are running half lengths, uh, my recommendation is for Talons. Sadly, I was excited for Katanas. It's such a cool word. I know, Katana is so cool. I love the reversible feature. I love that it has the mag release. I love that. It's just, this should be more flared. This shouldn't be so flexible. It has and things going for it, but it's just like... It's ew. got things going for it, definitely, but it's also just... Ew. And I do like the center fed magwell. That looks cooler, in my opinion, than the forward one, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. But, yeah, hope you guys like this video where we talk about the Cedar with the new color scheme that you can get from evike.com. Highly recommend checking it out, and, uh... Yeah, if you guys are interested in getting a Cedar but you don't like the white on the shell and you don't want to have to paint it, go to Evike and you can get a blue version or a red version, both with red and black or blue and black. But personally, go with the red one. Otherwise, it's stupid. All right, well, I will check you guys out in the next one. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, and we will see you later, everybody. Bye.